Hey everybody, it's your girl Miss Shada Bay. Thank you so much for tuning in to my channel. If you love everything you hear and see today, guys, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Hey guys, baby, I'm so happy you came to chill with me today. <sighs> guys, y'all ain't heard from me. You know what I was doing. Working hard for the money. Mm -hmm. So hard for the money. Mm -hmm. She was hard for the money. I'm telling you. Getting these kids back in school. I got my daughters back in school. You know, they little women now. They little in their tween stage. Where they in between kid and teenager. And let me tell you something. I'm buying for little women now. I got to buy bras, underwear, slips, undergarments, shoes. I mean, they clothes is more, more or just as much as mine now. So... You know, they're getting the little booties and the little little breasts. And, you know, I'm like, oh, my babies are growing. So, they got to get they got to get more expensive type of clothes, you know. So, you got that. You got shoes. And then you got school supplies. And all the parents out there, y'all feel me with them school supplies. Like, literally, I have to get it for two. Two, two sets of school supplies. Two sets of clothes. So, you guys know I've been working hard for the money. I don't even want to talk about these bills I got. But I will say, I want to say thank you to everybody that support me during this time where I don't consistently put out a video at least once a week right now. I'm going to get back to that and I'm, I'm going to try at least do one video a week. But before I get started, I had a subscriber reach out to me. And I don't know if they want me to call them out. But I had a subscriber reach out to me. It was like, hey, Miss Shay, what's going on? And I'm like, yay, hey, you know. And they was like, what's up, Miss Shay? Well, when you going to put out another video for Love After Lockup? I was like, it's back on. <laughs> it's back on. That's how, guys, that's, I've been gone. That's what I'm saying. I didn't even know Love and Lockup was back on, Okay. Um, so, you know, I was binge watching. I, that gave me something to look at because I ain't had no show to watch. Once I found out it was back on, I said, girl, let me go on and watch it. And, and I'm going to put out a video. So, if you watch it, I, 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 thank, you for, thank you for reaching out to me, sis. Thank you for letting me know that I was missed in love. I appreciate you. Um, it feel good to know that somebody appreciated my content because I, I tried. You know, I done got so many. You know, YouTube done deleted some of my videos. They done banned some of my videos because I be listening. I be putting music in that. I got a bunch of copyrights. So, you know, I'm not really in it to try to make money. It's just fun for me and it's just something I like to do. So, you know, I don't care if I get monetized or not really. I just don't want them to cut my channel off. <laughs> so I might have to slow down on the music and stuff so that I can at least keep my channel because I like the content. I like to connect you know with people and it's like a big family all y'all my shea baby so i appreciate y'all 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 supporting me loving me and i love you guys back and um so anyway and i got that out of the way i like to thank god <laughs> i want to get to this love at the locker but i'll be honest i didn't want to watch it i'm gonna be honest i i didn't want to watch it because i'm really funny about going to the new group like i'm like oh the new people you know because i i'm invested in the older people but a few of them i don't care nothing about anymore so i don't mind them leaving <coughs> michael sarah <coughs> oh <laughs> i don't mind them going nowhere baby because i'm tired of the same storyline i'm tired <coughs> lacy i'm tired of the same storyline so shane I, i'm just tired and I, she's John. I'm tired. Okay, so, but it's some new people on here, and guys, they're strange. They're Hi, I'm Stan from the all new season of Love After Lockup. Don't forget to tune in to. Hi, I'm Stan new from the all new season of Love After Lockup. Don't forget to tune in to. People are strange when you're a stranger. Faces look ugly. When you're alone, women seem wicked. When you're unwanted, streets are uneven. When you're down, 
when you're strained Faces come out of the rain When you're strange No one remembers your name When you're strange When you're strange When you're strange People are strange When you're a stranger Faces look ugly When you're alone Women seem wicked When you're unwanted Streets are uneven When you're down When you're strange Faces come out of the rain When you're strange No one remembers your name When you're strange When you're strange When you're strange All right, yeah Okay, I, I'm gonna start from the beginning because I'm since I'm I didn't do a show by show. I'm just gonna sum up what I saw. I'm gonna start with the lease that was shown. Um, and to be honest, the lease interesting. Um, it would be Courtney and Josh. Um, Courtney is a lie <laughs> I'm just gonna say it she is a lie and I know she a liar because her lips is moving when she said that she didn't know that as a lieutenant guard in the jail in the in the prison that she didn't know that dating an inmate was against the law. That's the first thing they tell you. We don't want you messing with the inmates. And baby, I know that because I got a bunch of friends and some family members that are correction officers and they talk about that all the time. They talk about that all the time. So you knew. She told me, oh, I, it was a, I thought I knew it was a rule, but I didn't know it was a, against the law. No, they ingrained that in you, baby. They let you know that's against the law. And, and, and you know what? That's something that you shouldn't have to, um, you know, stop playing. Just stop lying. Just, you know, because that's, that's with anything when it comes to a job. They tell you, please do not fraternize with the customers or don't fraternize with other coworkers on that level okay that's whether you a teacher um anything on a professional level um, so she kind of lost me a little bit when she started off lying courtney is a person who has low self-esteem like she said that she basically the how she fell in love with this dude is she was basically searching his room for contraband found some letters that he wrote about you know he wrote some personal stuff about how he felt you know alone and how he you know he didn't fit in and all this and she she was saying she was reading it and it touched her and it's like now she just automatically just connected with him and she fell in love with him and everything like that and you know she's saying that you know she called it caused her to lose her job ultimately she found out about ultimately she started coming to visit him and when she was coming to visit him, this is how you know she was wrong. Because, I mean, you saying you didn't know it was wrong, but why would you come every time you visit him? You changing your wigs. You changing your, you, you just, you just use, don't, don't do that, boo. Don't do that. You change your wig. You were bold, even sticking your tongue at, you know, just saying, F, F this whole situation. I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be with this man. And you know what? I know that this relationship is not going to work because she's going to constantly remind him that she lost her job for their connection 
and I hate that she's putting that on him because that was her decision. You, he, of course, he's going to go along with that. He's a prisoner. He's been in jail his whole life. Most of all his life from a teenager, he's been in jail. So you gave him something to do and something to talk about. He ain't got no life outside of that. So you sitting up here going and visiting him and sneaking and coming back and winking and whatever else you was doing. And then now you want to sit here and say, it's because of you, Josh, that I lost my job. No, you made that decision, boo. You felt so low about yourself that you looked in that inmate's personal business and tried to uh, connect with that prisoner and somebody like her needed to be fired and to be honest they better be careful with her because somebody like that would do anything for a man and when I tell you if she got with the right one she wouldn't just be on, on, on she just wouldn't have that felony charge she'll be in there permanently because she would do anything for a man if you go that far, she'll do anything for love. She'll do anything for the for that 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 attention that she's she's needing. Okay, this dude's out. You know they having this deal pickle love romance the way they just going on about a deal pickle all day, and um, you know she she's corny, he's corny. You know um, they 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 you know they 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 they, they feel like they, they got this romance almost like a love and Juliet type of thing where nobody, where we can't be together because they can't be together because both of them are felonies. So she wants them to be together, but they can't. He can't parole to her house, but you know, she still sneakily tries to get him to come there and everything like that and he gets there, but he has to go to his cousin's house eventually, but I think he'll stay with her for like 10 days. But that, you know, people don't know she, he, she can stay there. For, they still breaking the law. So I'm saying she's still doing her thing. He gets there, he sees what she has set up. He like, okay, baby, you did this. You got everything for us. Thank you for setting this up. You know, he like, I'm going to try to do what I can do, you know, to make this better. But he is institutionalized. So all he does, they had sex once or twice. He said it was like him being a virgin again, just because he, he, he hadn't been with a woman in so long. And they had maybe sex twice. And from that moment on, he still was sitting there eating ramen noodles all day and playing video games all day. And she's like, dang, I'm here. I'm you. I want you to be with me like you said you was going to be with me on the phone. And he was like, man, I think it's broken. <laughs> he like, dang, you know, you got to give me time. And, you know, and she's like breaking down. She's crying all the time. She's nagging him half the time. And he's just kind of just like. A little combative but at the same time he's like you know you know kind of ignoring her you know and um and it's just sending her up into a whirlwind because she the person like that don't like to be ignored and um she just basically told him listen you got time to talk to your friends in prison and you don't even be you don't even connect with me and he was like well these are my friends I connected with them over the years and you know I'm sorry I mean everybody might have their opinion on this situation but I think when you date an inmate that's been in jail for that amount of time from a young person like a person that's been there from a from their youth um, at his age and when he doesn't really want to connect like that with a woman, I think you have to take into consideration that he could be either bisexual or he likes men now. He's been in jail half his life. All he does seen is men. That's all he know. That's what he feel comfortable with. Now he got these boobies. He got, you know, he got all this stuff. He might not be gay, but I think that could be a possibility for him. But, you know, time will tell. But on the season finale, you know, he's trying to make stuff right. So he does a little treasure hunt. It don't take much for her because her esteem is so low. He just put some post-its up in a heart. Put, made a treasure hunt with the, with her animals in there. Um, put stuff on, on, on food and stuff. Gave her this ugly little blue dress with these little ugly clunky heels. Um, she put that little dress on... 
you know, she was so excited. And it was kind of romantic in a sense, but he ain't got no job, dog. You know, I, I, I just can't get aroused with somebody who don't have no job. So that's just me. But anyway, because I work hard for the money. <laughs> so anyway, she goes, he got a little picnic out, and that was sweet, you know. But I feel like in a sense... He was tired of her nagging, and he had to stay there a little longer, and he just had to go on and set the mood to keep her calm, so that way he could stay there to to finish out his time. You know, while he there, he has a, a bunch. He gives a he asks her how she liked the treasure hunt. She's like, "Oh, you know, I like the treasure hunt," and he give her the pickles, and the pickles had a ring on it, and it was a ring for him because he threw his ring in the trash. Okay, I don't want to talk about them so long because they was boring, but I don't want to sum up this whole interview with them. Okay, so anyway, ultimately, he went to jail. After, as soon as he got to his cousin's house, he went to jail. So that was the end of that. So the next couple that, okay, who I want to talk about? Oh, okay, I know who I want to talk about. I want to talk about one of the strangest couples that was on there that was not just strange period just it just was strange looking at them was um Doug and Rachel okay Doug is like six six or something and I Rachel about four feet maybe four feet eight so it was our it was it was cute to look at them uh, funny at the same time um it was a cute they was a cute looking couple and I'll be honest I wanted them to win because I love Rachel. Rachel is spicy, okay? She, 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 I could tell she really cared for Doug. And I think she just cared for Doug because Doug was so big. You know, Doug was so big and he was kind of handsome, you know, but he was so big and she probably felt protected by him, you know. So I think she loved his height and she just fell in love with that, you know. So she was willing to do anything. You know, she met this guy online and they got married and she took in his son and you know even before he got out of jail and you know I'm, I'm looking at this little boy and they seem like they have a good relationship but he was steady on that game he's just being a kid but he still needs some training you know but you know she seemed like they she you know they have an agreement and everything and she talks to him and everything and and tell him his dad gonna come out and how you feel about that and he like you know well I'm gonna punch him in the gut and then I'm gonna give him a hug and you know but she was so she introduced her she talked told her friends about him she was excited the friends was looking at her like boo nah that ain't gonna work you done did did it twice it ain't work and she was like well the third time the charm and she's running around here bit carrying baloney bigger than her to go you know because she said that her and Doug talked about the three b's which was baloney boobs and blowjobs so when she meet them they instantly they hook up they have sex you know get that out the way you know she brings him around dougie dougie he doesn't punch him in the gut he hugs him and cries says the best day of his life um dougie's been through a lot you know his mom's on drugs she lost custody his dad you know he was in jail never raised him and his family has been raising little dougie okay and as doug starts getting into society he meets her mom her mom already peep game said you know what it's something about him he he got darkness over him you know one thing about a mom you know when you get a certain age you can look at people you know and i noticed that now as i done got older i could look at people and be like they ain't bad shit. <laughs> you know you could just look at them okay and the mom like no nah, i don't live too long boo I know you're going to do my daughter wrong, but I, I love my daughter. I hope it don't get dangerous for her, but I love her. I, I let her make her own decisions, but I know this is not going to work out, you know. But like I said, Rachel was just blinded by the initial attraction with all those tattoos, and she liked that bad boy image, and, you know, so she just was, you know, she was gone, you know, she, you know, so mama know that that's why she ain't bothered when she saw doug she already knew what was what was up with her daughter you know even though you know rachel has been in the military rachel is an engineer rachel makes good money she could take care of herself you know so 
anyway, long story short, I grew to love Lil Dougie because Lil Dougie was telling it like it is. Now, I'm not about kids disrespecting their parent, but Doug hasn't presented himself as a parent to Lil Dougie. When Lil Dougie told him <laughs> that he was a filthy womanizer, <laughs> I almost peed on myself. I said, oh my God. Because Doug was trying to, you know, connect with him over, you know, they was eating lunch or something. And he was like, um, you know, I seen your little girlfriend. He said, no, no, no. No, I don't have girlfriends. He said, I, I have one girlfriend. I'm not like you and all the girlfriends you have. And he was like, what? You know, like, you know, and 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 then he was like, you filthy womanizer. Like, he, he was just going in on his daddy. But... Rachel didn't say nothing, but at the same time, Rachel face was saying it all like, mm. you know, when when Doug brought her to meet his family because he wanted to see his dad because his dad is sick. He got like kidney or liver. I don't want to mix it up, but it's something going on with one some of his organs and he's fa they're failing. And Doug was saying my dad was big like me, but he, you know, he shrunk in size because he's been ill. He wanted to see his dad because he didn't know he hadn't seen his dad in so long and he just wanted to make sure he got to see him. But, you know, he just was in urgency to see his dad. So he goes to see his dad and they bring little Dougie and that little scene right there with his family, I ain't gonna lie. I was like, that's a doggone, that's a doggone show. <laughs> I want them to have a show. <laughs> That ain't nothing but straight up drama. I'm not going to say the white tea drama, but they, hey, that's what it is. <laughs> it was straight up drama. I mean, they were just going back and forth, back and forth, calling each other names. Getting It just was getting ugly. And um, the sister bust out and told Rachel, listen... My brother, a dog, don't trust him. He'll be back in jail in 90 days. He got women. He's a dog. Do not trust him, you know. And Rachel was just like, I could tell she was startled at that. But at the same time, she she heard her. You know, she heard her. You know, Dougie was upset because um, the, the aunt was trying to openly you know embarrass him in front of his dad about him writing letters to him and all that and you know he was upset and, and he was like I just want to talk to Rachel because Rachel has been like a mother figure to him and, and he has respect for Rachel versus him having respect for his dad and everything like that but he still knows that his family because that family has taken care of him when his dad had you know so he was saying, telling his dad listen I need them he was like he said why did you go off on them like that and he was like well I don't need them son he said but I do because Dougie I already know his daddy ain't about nothing he know his daddy gonna go back to jail so that's why he said listen don't mess it up with them because I need them because if things don't work out with you and Rachel I'm back there you know so anyway um, things didn't work work out with Rachel, um, because when they got back, you know, I mean, Doug tried to propose to her and stuff, but that was some bull crap. He knew he was, you know, out of control. He was running around with other women, and one of the women that he was running out around with, he slept with her and his friend. I don't know if it was his friend or his brother. Um, I think it was a friend house, and he, then that friend girl contacted Rachel and told Rachel what was up and she said he they was dis he was disrespectful he's a he's not a good person and you know they knew that Rachel was helping him with his son helping him get back on his feet and everything like that they was she was like he's a dog and I'm just letting you know anyway long story short she confronted him about it he got mad punched a, a punched her um, cabinet down and said the only reason he did that because he didn't want to punch her in the face and see in the beginning when he was talking to Rachel it was times that when he was speaking to her I was like that man gonna whoop her behind like you could hear the aggression in his voice I know a woman beat her when I hear it I, I was like that man's gonna hit her so I'm glad he didn't hit her I'm glad he got the hell on but you know she still wants him you know she still wants him she says she don't but her heart is still with Doug she wanted Doug to get it together she wanted t to have that family dynamic but I knew that he didn't care nothing about her when he said what he said when they got together all he kept talking about was the things that she had and provided for him and he was like he'll be a fool to mess this up because he's never lived so good 
he never wanted her. He never, he just wanted what he can get out of her. And one thing I can say about her, she's smart because she didn't let him get into her bank account. She did buy him what he need. And when she, whatever she bought him, he took it just like the snake he is. He took little Dougie, you know, behind her back, you know, and took them and left. And, you know, she was real mature about everything. And her mom came and, and said, this dude here was nothing but darkness. And I'm glad he gone because, you know, basically I, I saw this. You know, and at the end, they showed that Doug ended up going back to jail, and he gonna be there for a while for what he did. He he gonna go back to jail because he up there running from the police, up in a chop shop, um, um, doing crystal meth. But he a white dude, so he probably might get by five more years. He's not gonna get what he really deserved. You know, he hit a cop car or something like that. You know, he might get five to ten years, but. Dougie gonna be a grown man uh, uh, by the time he get back out of jail and um they showed at the end that Rachel had him she had him back and it was nice to see him you know back in her surroundings because you want him to have stability but I have to commend her for that because I've been through something like that and I know it's hard to date somebody and um because I, I actually was dating somebody that was out of jail and he had three kids and we was we was bonding our kids together and I really embraced his kids like their mom like to, to me to this day I still love the hell out of kids but they broke me when we broke up and we had to break up when we broke up the kids had to go too and he made sure he that was the first thing he did was take them kids from me because the kids bonded with me so well that they weren't even listening to him no more because like I said the, the respect was lost. They had more respect for me because they seen what type of what what I was producing and what type of parent I was. So it was getting to the point where they wasn't even listening to him. He was getting mad and getting disrespectful and everything like that with me and them. And um, you know, cause he was cheating, he was doing his own thing and everything. And no matter how much I cared for him, I my friends was like, you kept worrying about those kids, and I did, and it broke me. I grieved over those kids. I'm really still grieving over because I love them. You know, I love them. I love them. And he had two boys, and I was so excited to have boys because I don't have any boys. I only got two girls, and I was like, okay, I got girl, I got boys now. I didn't have to carry them, you know. And they and the boys loved me, you know. And you know, it was just hard. So I could I could see why she felt the way she felt when Doug was gone, you know, because it just changed the whole dynamic of the family. But anyway. The next couple I want to talk about, Brittany and Ray. Brittany is somebody that I, I, I want to like Brittany, but Brittany kind of get on my nerves. I don't know. It's something about her that seems so fake to me. I just don't really connect with Brittany. It's like she's all for camera, all for show. Um, you know, she says she comes from a, a middle class family. Both, that, you know, basically she's saying she came from money. And she's spoiled, she's a brat, you know, she's this and that. And I don't know, you know, but my thing is, you know, when when when, when people get on the, the TV going on like that and they saying all this stuff, but they got on a synthetic wig, it, you know, it just don't add up to me. Because like one plus one is two. You know, if I was rolling like that, I, I would have me on at least a $1,200 wig, okay? Especially since she don't have no kids and she's single. She got a nice place to stay and she's working two jobs, okay? So, um, but anyway, this dude, Ray, he seemed like he was a decent guy. His story resonated with me because something happened like that to my fam, my father. You know, he had something similar happen to his mom. And I know for a fact that that destroyed him as a man. You know, as far as he, it happened when he was a child and he witnessed his mom being murdered. And it and, and so I connected with Ray on that because emotionally Ray is broken. Okay. And um, it caused him to go into depression, go into drugs. And that's why I say Brittany don't know what she's really getting into with that. Because that is just, just that alone he's still a broken little boy and his grandma recognized that when she talked about meeting Ray to her family and everything like that her family was basically saying listen we don't want to get involved with that we don't want to meet him because you just came out of a relationship with fat black and bald or bald fat and black whatever they they tell who they said was whooping Britney's behind now Britney seemed like a person who does 
you know know what to say to get a man pissed off um but i don't i'm not going to take up for him if he put his hands on her because nobody i don't care what she says does or how she acts or proceeds he had no right to touch her but ray doesn't seem like an abuser to me ray seems like if anything somebody would abuse him he seems very uh, and that's i think that's why his family is so protective over him because they know he was hurt and he was making bad decisions and that's what landed him in jail he got in jail for selling uh trying to attempt to sell or whatever um drugs pain killing drugs or prescription drugs and they gave him like three years or whatever because he had never been in trouble and everything like that and he you know but he lost his mom tragically and so you know they basically let Brittany know listen boo because grandma said I don't understand why you got to go look in prison for a man so I got my eye on her and grandma ain't playing grandma was there every second of the way she said that's my baby and no matter how big he is he might be 29 30 years old but he's still my baby so you know she got her eye on Brittany but Brittany was doing too much to me like even when she came in with them t-shirts and to meet his family and stuff like when she was like he better hug me first why do you feel like he should hug you first I would have just stepped back and let his family connect first. They the one been dealing with that more than me. I only you only know this dude for almost you ain't even know him for a year. So what gives you the right to feel like you need to go hug them first? And when she ran there to hug him first, I was looking at her side eye too. I, if I was a family member, I'd be like, girl, she don't sit her ass. Girl, she don't sit her behind down. I, I would have been looking at her side eye too. I'm I'm sorry, that's too much. Okay, calm down you know and even ray was kind of like taken back you know because he didn't know how you know he she won't allow him to even introduce her to them she just going on like she just been there from day one from when he first got incarcerated she's doing the most and she's crazy she's crazy she's pressuring him just like how the uh, charade Chevelle was doing um um quailing pressuring him about marriage pressuring him about babies and you know i think he's just a person i think if she give him time because i think he do care about her a little bit if she give him time to get adjusted i believe he'll be a good man for her and he, and he's because he's a good man i could tell he got a good heart and he just he just need love you know and um and, and he, i believe he do have good intentions um but she's going to run him off if she don't calm down. Because she, she wants too much too fast. I don't understand why you just feel like, I don't want to be a 40-year-old mother. See, she does too much for me. Because regardless of the fact, if you have a baby now, you're 33, you're going to be a 40-year-old mother. So what's the difference? <laughs> what's the difference? Their child will be 8. I mean, what, five, what 8, 8, 9, 10? Nope, that is wrong. Your child will be 9. Or whatever. And I mean, you still gonna be a forty-year-old mother. Also, so calm down. And I know my math is wrong, but y'all though, it's four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so of course my math is gonna be wrong. Um, but she's just doing a little bit much for me. Okay, you know, pressuring him, give trying to give him a date. You know, he's he's just trying to get it. Just he ain't even got a job yet, boo calm down she just you know she just i can't wait for you to start paying for everything and i can't wait for you to do this and i can't wait for you to do that it's just too much and she gonna i see why she's single because um you're doing too much if that's the type of man you want you should have got him okay and there's not too many men that's willing to do that for you okay because you're too much you're doing too much okay and i i, I mean in nowadays it's just not that many men that does that. It's a few that still do that, you know. But somebody like her, I, I doubt it. They would probably do it for her because she she just too much, you know. Um, but anyway, I digress. I wanted to work for them because I I do want I do want her to find happiness, and I want him to find happiness. But one thing about it, I know that Grandma gonna make sure that everything is a 100 okay and um so he met her dad Brittany dad because he was telling Brittany listen you met all my family because her family they had to get together she cooked and everything and they got together and they was like well, where your family at she was like well they're not gonna come you know so you know that everybody kind of she's sketchy with everybody you know but you know she a little bit much because they know she a little crazy 
But, you know, because she was going on about how good the sex was with him and, you know, that's the best she ever had. And she just, what made me know she was crazy when she wanted to put him in a prison. She said, I, I, what woman wouldn't want a man locked down because he's on house arrest? What what woman do you wouldn't want her man locked down? And, you know, no, I don't want nobody up here locked down. I want him to have his freedom because God knows I want mine. I, I, I don't want him under me 24-7. Okay, I have other things I have to do. And when I'm ready for you, I'm ready for you. But, but let me live my life, baby. Okay? <laughs> let me be free. Okay, I don't have to be up under you 24-7. But she's very needy. So anyway, dad met him. And I thought her dad was really mature about it. And he was just basically saying, I know she grown. I'm going to give you a shot. You know, and I hope you prove yourself. That's it. You know, and he said, and once you prove yourself, I don't mind embracing you as my son, family member. Or embracing you. And I thought that was cool. She have a pretty good, cool dad. And I love to see that black dad that, that seemed like he cared. Because he, he said basically... One thing about it, for sure, he better not put his hands on her because I ain't going to tolerate that no more. That's a, that's the last draw. <laughs> so it, I'm glad that she have her good daddy. She's blessed for that. It's two couples on here that every time I see them, all I hear is this. <laughs> All I hear is that snap music. <laughs> I, I'm talking about every time they come on there. It's just like I think I'm I'm watching the pre, you know, like the the the, the skit for 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 um snap because and those two couples is Stan and Lisa and Jeff and Anissa. Like okay, Stan and Lisa Lord. First of all, Stan is creepy as hell. He looks like Hugh Hefner mixed with Mr. Rogers. And when I first looked at Stan, I kept saying it's something about him. I don't know what it is. What is it? And then I finally realized David from 90 Day Fiance. Him and Stan got the same wig. <laughs> that hair is out of control. Both of them supposed to be rich, and it and they just spending money on little blonde girls. You know, Lisa. You could tell Lisa's not only a dope fiend, but Lisa is a lesbian. Okay. I don't know how I, I, I really want to say she bisexual but I know she don't want Stan. Stan is like he, he he's proud that he's a millionaire I think he did stocks and bonds and stuff he worth two point something million dollars and all his friends Jimmy and um I forgot the other the friend name something with a D I can't think of his name right now but they see right through her through through her like they like they like, dang, you know, you being played. But Stan is old and he lonely. His wife died. He's a widower. And he just wants somebody in the house. And he know that him and Lisa have done freaky things together. He likes the sex. And he wants to keep the sex going because he has this little dungeon with this little, um, little funny jacket. <laughs> And him and Lisa get engaged in like sexual activities that he enjoy, and he want to keep her in the dungeon. In in exchange, he he would take care of Lisa, and then he said once he passes away, she'll even be part of his will. He wants to marry Lisa. Lisa really don't want to marry him, but one thing I can say about Lisa, she playing him, but at the same time, she never really gets caught in saying her emotions about him. She doesn't lie. Now, that, I, one thing that I do notice that because if he say he love her, she be like, all right, good talking to you. I'll talk to you later. She don't never respond reciprocation of what he's given her. She like, you know, he like, he, he like, you know, you look so beautiful and all that. He said, well, she said, well, I don't look like that right now. I look like my brother. <laughs> you know, because when she was in jail, she got in a fight. You know, so she, you know, Stan went and got her wigs, got her hair done. 
you know, he, he's trying to buy Lisa's affection. But Stan is an alcoholic. He gets drunk off wine and gets abusive in his words. He, you know, he's miserable. He just wants somebody to love him because he's really old and, you know, he just wants a companion. You know, probably better his wife gone, you know, um... I don't know if his wife was his freaky person, but maybe not, you know, because sometimes they'll marry a certain woman and then they'll be with a certain woman. So, you know, I don't know what was going on with that. But Lisa's brother and, um, I guess, um, stepmother came there to meet with Stan. And um, because Stan had done threw Lisa out. And they got back together. But, you know, when stuff happened like that, you always go to your family. So she went to her family and told her what Stan had done. And the brother come in there looking just like Lisa without a weed. <laughs> she was not lying. <laughs> and, you know, Stan was like, you know, I'm concerned because her whole family is a bunch of criminals. And Stan, I'm concerned too. Because like I said, all I heard was the music. Hey guys, y'all know as soon as I get good and talking, I always lose storage. So I've got to try to hurry and make this video quick before it cuts off on me again. Um, but yeah, those two couples, um, Stan and Lisa, I, I don't think that's going to work. Her brother already kind of kind of peep game. He knows his sister. You know, but Lisa gonna stay in there for the haul, long haul because she trying to get something out of that relationship. She's trying to get set up and Stan got the money. She already walking through the house scoping, seeing what she can get. It just seems like it's just gonna be a, a snap movie. Like they gonna hit snap Stan on top of the head and you know, his kids gonna be like, we knew that was going, his friends gonna be like, we knew that was happening. You know, that whole family came in there. You know, it just seems like that's gonna be some kind of stuff like that. I hope not, but that's just what I get that vibe. And the same thing with Anissa and Jeff. Jeff is an obvious junkie and she's taking in with him. She's ke keeping him but he a smart junkie though and he knows he pays attention to her. He's spending up her money but he, he know he got a good thing and you know his her friend Kyle you know he has loyalty to her so he tells her the secret that Jeff told her which that he have a child. Okay I don't know why Jeff think that he could tell Cal that and Cal's going to be loyal to him when he's a loyal to Anissa, which is his friend. And um, I don't think Anissa is as much as a friend to him as she he is to her because I didn't like when they got into that fight and she just was like, I'm staying in the house. Even though I get that because you're going to let two men work it out. Also, that's how two people could get killed. The way she did that, it could have escalated. It could have been something totally big, bigger than that and somebody could have lost their life. But anyway, it didn't happen that way. They ended up discussing each other, to each other, you know, what was the problem. She said that she found out he had a child. She felt like she can't trust him. He says, well, I need to do to gain your trust. I, 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 seen, I looked through your phone. I went through your things. And I noticed that you have taken lingerie pictures for other guys and people that's in jail. And she said, well, we weren't even together because you got to remember in the beginning of the season, this dude done, you know, he, he basically just did the same thing that Tony was doing to Angela. Every time they got ready to meet up, he never showed up, you know. So she just keep betting on this marriage. She want to get married. She's basically lonely. She finds him attractive. Um, but every time he talk, I just hear, you know, he said he want to get his teeth fixed in the long run. He want him to get a motorcycle and some Gucci jeans. <laughs> He is off the chain. He's spending her money, her credit card. She said she spent over $9,000 on him. It's a hot mess. So basically, he's back in jail. She's still planning for the marriage. But the main couple that I want to talk about, and I'm trying to hurry so I can talk about them, is Deontay and Nicole. Uh, and Nicole Jr., okay? Deontay, basically, 
in the beginning with him, I kind of lost respect for Deontay in the beginning because he just seemed like somebody who's very close-minded. He seems like he watches porn all day, and all he's fixated on is having a blonde head, blue-eyed, white girl with titties. He don't care how she looks. He don't care about her character. He says he likes other women, but that's not true. He only wants a white girl. And I mean, whatever you want, that's fine. That's your preference. But I just feel like if you're truly looking for love and you want a relationship, you should be open to any and every possibility because your love might not come from that and the women that you're running for and running to don't want you you know um Deontay seems to be a nice guy but he's a little weird he is a little weird you know I wish he I don't know where they got him from I wish they would have kept that he, he, his little, you know his little fantasy to himself um I don't know where they found him at you know, he's playing with this doll. I don't want to have the image of him humping on this little torso doll that he names Nicole Jr. Um, he has a friend, and um, I can't think of the friend name, but he's telling him the truth about Nicole. Nicole is basically using him. Nicole is a lesbian, but she's everybody's girl. She's running with Zach. She's running with um, her girlfriend. I can't think of her name right now. But just she's not being loyal to him. You know, he's been through this before. His ex, before she passed away, um, Chelsea did him the same way. He, his brother, his mother, everybody been trying to get through to him. He's not. He's uh, He's been unbreakable. They had a funeral service for Nicole Jr. You know, after he realized that Nicole was not going to be in, she wasn't going to submit to him. She does not want him. I knew she didn't want him when she first came out and ran to him. It didn't seem genuine. It didn't seem real. But one thing about Nicole that aggravates me a lot with her, that she keeps saying she loves Deontay, and we all know that she doesn't love him. And she loves to say she does and tries to make it seem like he's the reason why she's not interested. But but he's bought all this stuff and you've taken all this stuff like her mom and her mom girlfriend or wife said you've taken it from him you took from him like his mother said but you don't want him so you shouldn't take his things that he gives you the gifts that he you just miss his gifts you just want his gifts but you don't want him you know and this guy's done everything he can to get like his friend said he was trying to buy a white girl so you know Deontay He's a little weird and everything. He's kind of funny to me. Um, he seems like he he seems like he can laugh at himself. He know he's crazy, and um and I like the fact that he can laugh at himself because <laughs> I sure was laughing at him too. Another scene I want to talk about is when Deontay went home to talk with his mom about Nicole getting out and being in his life, and you know. You know, he was talking with his mom and his brother, and the mom was just like, son, let me talk to you, baby. You know, you getting into the same situation that you've been in before, and it's something wrong. What's going on, baby? And he like, no, mom, I know you think I'm getting in the same situation, but because she in jail and she a white girl with blonde hair, but I promise this ain't the same thing. And his little brother was like, um, bruh, it really is the same thing. And she was like, well, um, how much you spending on this girl? You know, she don't love you. You know, she does love me. She say I'm one in a million. And, you know, mom looking at him like, oh, my baby, plum dumb. She said, well, uh, how much you spending on her, son? On her, son? And he said, I don't know, mom, a couple of grand, uh, three thirty thousand dollars And when she, when she heard that, them little eyes started blinking her son. Her other son was looking like, what? You in trouble now? And when she started blinking them little eyes like that with them little contacts, I already know black mama kicked in. And she, she was like, boy, is you just dumb or just stupid? Baby, the girl don't love you. I can't even get you to fix my dough. But you could give another girl $30,000 that's in jail. You lost everything you had the last time one of these little white girls got in your head. And you had to stay with me. I couldn't even get $50 out of you. What in the world is you spending on a white girl or a girl in general in jail, in prison? I got my eye on her. And another thing I want to talk about with Deontay, that he said something that really bothered me when he in, when he brought Nicole to meet his mom. He told Nicole, are you ready to meet the boogie monster? You know, I think he has a self-hate issue. And I think it might be stemming from his mom for some strange reason. I don't think he'll ever date a black woman. I think the way he looks at his mom, it's like a fear. I don't know what kind of raised uh, upbringing that he had but it's almost a dislike and a fear 
you know and i see that a lot in a lot of black guys when it comes to their moms you know it's like i don't i don't want nothing that's like her you know because sometimes they have this underlying hate for their mother I don't know if that's his case, but I think he does have a self-hate so issue. So now we're getting ready for life after lockup, and there's going to be our old couples mixed with a little bit of, I think, one or two couples on the new. Um, but, yeah, that's my summary. I had to cut it off short, guys, because my phone could die at any minute. So I just want to say thank you guys for waiting for my review. I love you guys, and hopefully I get some more storage space. <laughs> do another video but anyway that's my review of life after lockup well love after lockup thank you guys if you love like everything you heard and seen today please remember to like comment and subscribe <laughs> bye <laughs>